Hello and welcome to the Sharp 600, brought to you by Covers.com. I'm your host, Jason Logan. Welcome to the Wednesday, May 31st edition of the podcast. We are on the cusp of the NBA Finals. Game one of Nuggets and Heat tipping off tomorrow night in Denver. We're going to get you ready for that game, share some insights on the series as well, too, with my good buds, Andrew Cayley and Rob Panea from Covers.com. They're going to come in here, talk all things Nuggets and Heat. Uh, I'm going to have some bets for game one as well, too, that I already have down. And Arthur DeCesar from the Las Vegas Superbook going to come in, give us the inside scoop on all the action from Sin City. And as well, with me, as always, Dell, my producer here at the 600. Dell, uh, we came so close to a Celtics and Lakers final. Are you are you content with – are you content – because that would have just been amazing. Are you content with Nuggets and Heat? That would have been amazing for you. I would not have been happy. Know. But, um, yeah, I don't know. It's fun to mix it up. I love when it's, when it's something different. It's boring mm-hmm. when it's always the same. Like that Warriors dynasty was brutal for a bit because you just knew every year that they're going to win and they're going to be mm-hmm. in the finals. So I like that it's new. I'd like to see – at least it's going to be – Either Jimmy Butler or Jokic win the title, and that'll be that'll be fun. It's good for the NBA to get new winners, not LeBron every year. No LeBron, no LeBron. I'll take a LeBron title next year, though. We'll take we'll take that. Uh, as we get going here, a reminder: take a minute or two, rate and review the Sharp Six Hundred podcast. We'd love to hear back from you. What do you want to hear for the NBA Finals? What do you want to hear over the summer months as we get towards football season? What do you want to hear in football season? Uh, let us know. We we love the feedback. And with all that said, uh, let's start the show. 2023 NBA Finals tipping off tomorrow night game one between the Nuggets and the Miami Heat and help us break down the best basketball bets for the series as well as the opener. We're going to run the little three-man weave. Uh, it's myself, Andrew Cayley, and Rote Panea. Those guys have been covering NBA as well as myself, fourcovers.com, all season long. Thanks for coming on here, guys. First off, who had Nuggets and Heat in their NBA Finals matchup? Anyone? Anyone? Any futures uh, hinging on anything here? <laughs> My mine was Clippers Woo! Bucks, which is just awful. Yeah, I had Nuggets Bucks, so uh, I mean, I had one side of it, but uh, Bucks got only well, we got one side, right? I had, I think I had Boston Sacramento was my was my bracket pick, but of course I had my I had the Lakers there as well too. My Lakers were so close. I was I was begging for a Lakers Celtics NBA Finals. That would have been amazing, but uh, yeah, fair to say, no. I think you're worth. I think the NBA was. Yeah, I was that hoping too. that Scott Foster was going to come in and uh, hit someone with a steel chair, but it did not happen. Uh, let's let's start <laughs> series price. Nuggets, pretty big chalk out there. Minus three sixty, minus four eighty, depending on where you want to bet. Uh, Miami coming back plus two seventy, plus three forty range. You know, Miami, the little team that could. Any any way that you jump into these kind of markets the way they are right now, or is there some different series markets or different series bets that you like? Uh, rather than just going straight, who's going to win and lose? Yeah, I mean, unless uh, unless you go with the underdogs here, there's no real value in uh, backing the Nuggets. Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, the Heat have really surprised me all playoffs, but at the same time, I do think this is a bad matchup for them. But I like some of the uh, series spread options. I think you can get a little bit of value out of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think the Heat are going to be able to push this one to seven games, but I think maybe keep it a little bit closer than that. Uh, so like being able to take the Nuggets on uh, one and a half games, uh, minus 1.5 series spread. Right now it's about minus 175. I think there's a bit of value there for sure. Yeah. Andrew, how about you? I took over I, t- I took over five and a half games for the whole for the whole series, minus 140. It's a decent price. I, I like. I agree with Rohit. I think this is a really bad matchup for the Heat, which is why I, it seems like everybody is picking the Nuggets in this NBA Finals. But they... They're a well-coached team, and they'll make adjustments. Spolster will make adjustments, and I think they've got, like, we think, they love saying they got that dog in them. So I think they steal a game or two in this series. I'm not, probably not in game one, not a big uh, believer in them yeah. in this matchup uh, uh, tomorrow, but uh, I really uh, I really think that this game could go okay. at least six games. I, uh, as, I, said, I said five. Sorry. I could see Miami winning one at home. We have seen the Nuggets kind of lay some eggs on the road, especially when they won those two games at home, went to Phoenix, looked terrible on defense against Phoenix, uh, and then came back and wrapped it up. And they've been so fantastic at home that I could see them, um, you know, maybe dropping one on the road in South Beach. But I had five. And then one of the other bets that I did love Mm. uh, was I took Michael Porter Jr., uh, did the series preview. And didn't want to get involved with much of the markets there. But I did take this uh, Michael Porter Jr. to lead – uh, or to have the most three pointers made in the series, which is out there like plus two forty to plus three eighty, depending on where you bet. Um, yeah, yeah, he's like a guy that. like he he shot the ball a lot from beyond the arc against the Lakers, 
I think there's going to be lots of space again as the, as the Heat try to figure out how to slow down Jokic. I don't know if that's going to be something that they can do. It'll be really, yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see if they, obviously the zone was really successful for them against the Bucks mm. and the Celtics, but <sighs> the the best answer for that is have to throw a big man in the yeah. center who can pass, and the Nuggets got the best one in arguably NBA history yeah. doing that. And uh, so you put them around, some shooters around him, and I like I like that. Um, yeah, nice and a nice return. For, I mean, some some places were really one. really high on Jamal Murray to be that like minus one forty odds on mm-hmm. favor type thing. So uh, that was a bet that I that I have down uh, already hitting into the series. So there's some different ways to skin a cat here when we're looking at these two teams. As far as game one, Nuggets open minus eight, got up to as big as minus nine, eight and a half, some places out there as of Wednesday right now. Now, the big reason for this is the rest edge uh, and the home court advantage that's always baked in there for, for Denver, uh, being that they've had, what, 10 days off, and the Celtics have, or the Celtics, the Heat have, what, three days off after that seven game series, and then they have to go to altitude in Denver. Are we making too much of that in this right now? Is this something that, that we should be kind of leaning into with game one? You know, I don't, I don't think so. I think I'd say no. I'm sorry. I was going to say, like, I think this is kind of bang on what I expected it to be. Uh, we were seeing pretty similar spreads towards the end of that uh, Celtics uh, Heat series mm-hmm. uh, in Boston. And uh, like you said, with that added rest advantage, uh, with the elevation in Denver, uh, you know, I definitely think this is pretty much bang on where it should be. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Heat are a team that I think, uh, you know, they've been very resilient, but we've seen them really kind of fold at times as well. Like when they do lose, uh, we saw that in a couple of those games against the Celtics, they lose pretty badly. Yeah. So I could definitely see that happening again in game one. Andrew? Yeah, I heard a stat that NBA finals who have a five or more a day rest advantage going into the finals and are playing at home are eight and one in game number one and have gone on to win the series eight of those nine uh, times. So that's my. Well, here, yeah, I got another there. little fun little stat for you here with the Nuggets. <laughs> so this season, the Nuggets are 16 and four straight up, 13, six and one ATS when playing on three or more days rest. They cover. 67.5% of the time. So definitely a big advantage. The one thing that the one thing that I makes me hesitant here is that Denver has gone from the intensity of playing in LA for those final two games and closing out that series. And um and uh, they've talked about how it's tough when you're away from the playoff atmosphere to replicate that intensity. And then we've had Miami that has just been living in the shit for seven games, you know, playing with pressure, scrapping for their lives in a game seven in Boston. So, you know, maybe it's something where they do come into this uh, already playing at that level and Denver has to come and meet them. I could definitely see maybe like a Miami first half wager Denver wins. Uh, Denver wins the game. You know how I love my double results, right? So those, yeah. I could see maybe something like that where Miami might come out and, and, and smack them around a little bit and then those legs get heavy in the second half and then the altitude the gets legs there. Get heavy. Then those yeah. adjustments uh, are there for the Nuggets. On, on top of on top of that, like the other, the other match I think is a lot of these teams like the Lakers, um, they've been able to you guard, you guard Jokic with Rui Hachimura and then have then you have Anthony Davis coming as a secondary help to protect the rim sort of thing. He just don't have that. It's going to be Bam mm-hmm. on him. It has to be Bam much on him the whole time. A hundred percent of the, a hundred percent of the time, and they've got like no depth behind him. And that what like, they're going to start Kevin Love? Maybe I don't. They maybe? get they get know. dangerously. It's it's really yeah, they tough get dangerously for them. small. Uh, uh, in that starting lineup too, because then you've got like an Aaron Gordon who's six eight, but but plays bigger, and then you've got a Michael Porter Jr. who's six foot ten, like small four. This <laughs> You're six, and you've 10, got Martin four. who's what six five. Jimmy Butler's what yeah. six 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 Jimmy seven, Butler. and then you've yeah. then you've got uh, Kevin Love and a Cody Zeller to bring off the bench. Those two guys weren't even on the floor. They didn't even play them in the final two games of that that Celtic series because they were just defensive liabilities. Yeah. Yeah, I looked it up here. So Miami to win first half, Denver to to win the game, plus four twenty five right now at three sixty five. If you like that, if you like that dirty double result, I'm also going to take KCP over one and a half. Yeah, I think just yeah, I just he's taken almost five per game, and I think what we talked about it. He's just going to sit in the middle, find those find those shooters. And I think KCP is kind of the guy that could be overlooked in this matchup a little bit. 
Like you're looking at Porter and you're looking at yep. Jamal Murray and, and he's the guy who could come in. And All right, I'm sure three-pointers are going to have a big say in how the totals play out for this. Total for this one, just under 220. Um, seen anywhere from 219.5, open 218, places kind of bouncing between that. You have two slower-paced offenses in terms of what their tempo was in the regular season and what they're doing right now. Two solid defenses. Miami, uh, you know, very, very switch-happy. We'll see how that works out with Jokic. Uh, but any feel for the over or the under in game one? Not really for me. I it's it's really tough because you want to you want to lean under. I think is my gut because of the way mm-hmm. the Heat play. But it seems like the Nuggets have up to their tempo in every series that they've gone through, and you could make the case that the Lakers were the best defensive team. In That's the second entire playoffs second half of when point. they made those those roster moves in in mid February. Yeah, they were very good defensively. Yeah, and. Uh, that did not seem to slow them down too much. So I, I'm a little, maybe I'll look at a Denver team total okay. in this one. Um, and instead of the full game total, but uh, I'm, I'm a little, I'm a, I'm a little unsure about the, sure. the full road. Any, any uh, yeah. feeling on the over under? Yeah, I think I'm uh, leaning towards the under here. It's uh, you know, I, I think the nuggets have actually like played every game I've seen since the all-star break, they've been playing slower and slower. It feels like mm-hmm. uh, you've seen them kind of get a little bit fast and loose at times. We saw that in that uh, Suns, uh, I think it was like game three against the Suns, uh series opener against yeah. the Lakers. Uh, but for the most part, you know, they've been, you know, playing, slowing things down, running things through the uh, inside there mm-hmm. and uh, have been playing better defensively too. Uh, you know, the end of that series against the Lakers, they played really well. Games five and six against the Suns, they played really well. Uh, you know, really, uh, you know, slow down, uh, you know, slow down KD there. And going up against KD and Booker, and now you're going up against a Heat team uh, that has, you know, Jimmy Butler kind of struggling to get buckets, and Caleb Martin probably is their uh, second best scorer there. So, yeah. you know, I, I, I could see uh, points being a little bit hard to come by for the Heat uh, in this one. Yeah, Also, I'm also leaning under here for a couple of reasons. Denver doesn't give away any cheap buckets. They're very, very solid. Not a lot of turnovers, so you're not going to get a lot of points off turnovers. They hit the boards really hard. They're much, much bigger than Miami, so I expect them to to own the glass, not give up many second-chance points off offensive glass as well. Like you said, they play that controlled possession. They can really slow down things, stick the series, and stand. Uh, And that's going to make Miami really in must-score situations every time down the floor, especially if they're not getting buckets off of turnovers that they were able to do against Celtics and and, and hit the glass for extra chance points and stuff like that. The other thing for me is Miami. How long can their hot shooting go? We saw the wheels wobble a little bit in those losses to Boston. They were red hot throughout the playoffs for the most part, had their wheels wobble uh, from outside. Uh, against the Knicks at times, but this is a team that was like 27th in three-point shooting in the regular season. Now they're the best three-point shooting team in the playoffs. And like you said, guys like Martin suddenly catching fire. I I expect some aggression. Denver, too, very long, can get a hand in front of those shooters. There's going to be some bigger matchups. Uh, And Denver did, uh, you know, while the Lakers aren't a very big three-point threat, but Denver doing well to protect against the three-pointer overall in the playoffs. So uh, also leaning under as well, too. And I I think it's... Like I said, there's there's just there's no easy way to score for Miami in this series. I'll say that. Uh, I've got some bets for Game One. I'm going to get to those later in the show. Got them in the hopper already. Anything else that you guys are looking at here now that we're 24 hours out from tip off of Game One, Andrew? What do you what do you like for bets in this game? Uh, I'm gonna I am gonna take the the Nuggets okay. in Game One at the minus eight and a half. I just they've been really impressive in series openers and. I, I bet them to win the NBA Finals after Game One of the of the uh, Sun series. Just like I knew they were being discredited a bit f- for being kind of like an over overrated number mm-hmm. one seed in the West, but uh, that was the game where I was like, this this team can re- they can win it all. Like they they have all the pieces that are needed to do it. And you guys talked about it. Don't give away possessions. The defense has been quietly mm-hmm. better, and like you like to say, they have the best player on the court every game of this series. And that's going to be a huge factor for them. Um, I'm, speaking of that, I'm going to take Jokic over his assists a little square over nine and a half. He's averaging 10.3 mm-hmm. per game in the playoffs. And I just, I know the Heat are going to try to throw that zone at him for a little bit. And I could really see him picking them apart sure. with it. So over 10 and a half or nine and a half, sorry, assists. For I, I could get him. There. It's pretty juicy. I think it's minus 135 or so, but I'm still. I can get a board with that. I, I do have some some overs in terms of points and, and things tied to points for some guys around Jokic as well, too. So definitely could see him. Uh, Rowett, got anything uh, you like for game one so far? 
Yeah, I mean, there's a couple things I'm uh, I'm taking a quick look at. One of them was the over points on BAM. I think uh, I think it's 16.5 on most books. Uh, I mean, obviously not getting involved enough against the Celtics. Uh, but like you guys mentioned, he's going to be kind of the lone guy that can match up with uh, Joker there. Mm-hmm. So I think he's going to be on the floor an awful lot. And uh, they really need him to kind of attack, I think, Jokic inside and get the inside there. And I think they're, they'll have a slightly easier time, I think, uh, than against the Celtics. Because Horford and Robert Williams did a pretty good job of kind of stopping him from uh, getting inside against them in the paint. But, uh, you know, I think we're getting a relatively low number there. And if the Heat want to win, they're going to need a bigger performance from Bam. So I like that. Uh, the other one is uh, over 7.5 rebounds for Jimmy. Um, like you mentioned, uh, they could get killed on the boards. Butler's been kind of their best rebounder, kind of all playoffs. Uh, he really needs to attack the glass there. And uh, right now, I think over 7.5 is at plus money. Uh, I think there are going to be plenty of rebounding opportunities in this one because there's going to be lots of uh, outside shots, I think, taken being taken by both teams. Okay. Um, do we Do we even bother with the MVP market at this point? Or is this just... Jokic and maybe a sprinkle on Murray. I saw, I saw someone take, I saw someone take Murray and one of the other mainstream media sites as the MVP. And obviously, there's there's no value in it, but <laughs> because I I believe the Nuggets are going to win, and they're if they're going to win, it's going to Jokic. Because if, so if Jokic if Jokic isn't scoring thirty points, then he's scoring nineteen points, and he's putting up fifteen assists and twelve rebounds. Yeah. One other bet I did have was I'm taking uh, Murray to have the highest game scoring like performance though yep. in the series. You can get right. that at two that's, to one. That's pretty so, good. He's, he's like good. Yeah. Well, Jokic will be the steady guy. Murray's good for his one or two kind of go unconscious from yeah. beyond the arc and he'll hang. Games he'll hang a forty like burger on somebody at some point. Exactly. Right All right. Uh, NBA title odds are up for next season already. Any teams that you want to get a jump on with futures? Obviously, we've got the off-season free agency market and some trades. We've got some big-name guys in the mix this year. Any teams that kind of tickle your pickle here for next season's futures? You know, the big one for me, I'm going to look at L.A. for two of them. One thing I'm going to avoid is the Clippers. Uh, I'm not touching them with a 10-foot pole at this point. It's either (laughs) George or Leonard. One of them is going to be hurt. Uh, We know this at this point. We've never really seen them all. It's it's a a sin, but we haven't seen them both healthy. I don't think it's happening anytime soon. Um, As far as the Lakers go, I think, uh, you know, I think there's a bit of value there. Uh, You know, they do have a little bit of, uh, they do have a little bit of room uh, in terms of the money market. I could see Kyrie going back there. Uh, You know, they have a little bit of uh, wiggle room because they have those expiring contracts. So it wouldn't shock me. Uh, especially at some of the uh, at some of the odds are getting for the Lakers, but uh, right now it's uh, it's an interesting market because it could be a pretty wide open season next year. Yep, Andrew, are we here inside? Uh, we're gonna. I love the Cavs. Cavs twenty five to one. We we've talked about the Cavs on mm-hmm. on here before. Uh, obviously, a very disappointing playoff exit this year. They did not expect to go out in the first round of the playoffs. Uh, they have a very strong, um, solid four in Allen and Mobley and Garland and uh, Mitchell. But uh, what we talked about is how that team has no depth beyond those four guys. So I think this is the off season. They go out, they, they get some good six man of the year kind of candidates, fill out that roster a little more. And then maybe next year we see them make a real push. And I would bet them now before those off season moves take place. And maybe we see, you know, who would be a good fit there. Uh, Jeremy those, uh, Grant. I think Grant would be a really nice fit with the Cavs. And, you know, I think so too. Yeah. Could be- Kuzma wouldn't be bad for them either, I don't think. Yeah. Uh, I think I got I to gotta pay attention to Phoenix. I still think that there's going to be some takers. Someone's going to want to jump on, on that jump on that, uh, on that bandwagon, play alongside Durant, play alongside a Booker. D- is DeAndre Ayton still there next season, do you think? Or you think this is something where they're going to try to bring in another, kind of make their own big three, Ayton, a big piece of that puzzle that they would trade away? I don't know. <laughs> That's a good question, though. I'd probably try to. Move got, him. I, mean, I, think, I think you try to move him. There's still value on him. You try to move him right now. I don't think. Uh, you know, I'm not sure if CP3 sticks around another year either. I think they might try to move on from both of them. They they look better without Chris Paul in the post postseason. Actually, when yeah. he when he got hurt, they they moved on a lot better. Uh, all right, we've talked about a lot of serious things, but as you know, we like to get silly here on the Sharp 600. Uh, Ted Lasso. Uh, which is a series that I love and watch my family and love it. Potentially coming to a close season three finale, I think is out now. It, it's it's taking everything in my power not to watch it. 
waiting for my wife to to be there tonight to watch it with me. Uh, everyone everyone loves to rank <laughs> sports movies, but how about sports TV shows? And give me give me your top three all time TV shows based somewhat around sports. Doesn't have to be directly tied to sports. What do you got there, Andrew? And we're like dramas. Whatever. Like you mean Whatever. fictional dramas or comedies, Comedy. or do we mean like docs? Uh, I would. S- or avoid the docs. Avoid the doc. The docs, because that's that could be a completely different okay. conversation. I would say yeah, more like yeah. dramas, comedies, series like that. Uh, so, admittedly, haven't watched Ted Lasso oh, yet, so I'm going to binge it all right, now that it's good. now that it's all over. So that's a good summer. That's that. a good summer. But, uh, uh, yeah. Pregnant <laughs> yeah, wife is is due in a few few months here. Now we're going to load up nice. on the TV shows that we need to watch, and that's yep. definitely on the list. Um, Number one for me, there's not a whole lot. Like, it's a short list, I think. there's. It's not like the sports movies where we have mm-hmm. a huge uh, cornucopia to pick from. Uh, the League <laughs> is a big one for me. I think it's a super underrated yep. comedy. I love the writing in that. And uh, it got a little repetitive after about season three or four. But uh, those first few seasons of The League, I really, really yep. enjoyed. Um, Friday Night Lights, um, obviously a, a, a solid show as well. And can I say The Sopranos? No. Because I feel like no show, no, no, but no, no. No, sh- no show I've ever watched talks stretch. about sports the betting more than no. The Sopranos. No, no okay. the um, no. Number three, sorry, <laughs> I don't know. Um, Friday Night Lights, The League, and geez, it's a tough one. I don't know what my number three is. Come back to me. Go to Row, and I'll, I'll pick Row, What, do, what do you got for us, pal? Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I love the league. League's freaking hilarious. Like you said, it gets a bit repetitive, but it's a good one. Uh, Friday Night Lights, classic. But uh, I really love Blue Mountain State, man. I think it's a little bit underrated. Uh, always made me laugh. Uh, it's, uh, it's great there. You got Alan Richardson there. Uh, he's now, uh, you know, taking on some big roles. But it's him when he's, uh, like, 20 years old, just playing the perfect jock. It's, uh, it's a great show. Yep. Uh, and I'm going to throw a little shout-out to a show I've been actually watching uh, uh, on Netflix called Sanctuary. Uh, it's a Japanese show. It's on Netflix Canada, though. I was watching it over in Japan. It's uh-huh. a show about a young sumo wrestler. Uh-huh. Uh, it's pretty cool. It's, uh, it's uh, very cool. It's a brand new show. Uh, it's a young up and coming sumo wrestler with attitude kind of taking on the whole establishment. And the bad guy is this 500 pound uh, sumo wrestling champion who has half his face burned off. And he's oh, my like, God. Got a big back <laughs> season one. So it's a, it's a pretty entertaining show. Is it is it dubbed or is it uh, subtitles? Uh, I watch in subtitles. I don't do dubs. Uh, it just sounds too weird when anything's dubbed, but uh, subtitles are pretty good. All right, all right. So I'm gonna. I'll, I'll give my. I. I'll say Ted Lasso is number one. I do really enjoy that show, uh, and the fish out of water story, and then all of the uh, feel good stuff. And just when you think it's gonna take take one of those like, you know, corny dramatic twists that you always see in shows where it's like, oh, this person who is really nice suddenly terrible, and they're the bad guy. It just doesn't do that. It's very hinged in reality. And uh, I, I'll, I'll sit down and watch it. I'll watch it with my kids. They all love it. Good good lessons and stuff like that. Friday Night Lights, definitely up there. The League, definitely up there. Eastbound and Down. Hilarious. Thank you. That was the Hilarious. one I was saying. Yeah. And also, <laughs> uh, Ballers was awesome. I really enjoyed Ballers. Underrated one? You, you took my third one there. I was going to say Eastbound and Down, even though it hasn't aged no. as well as some of the other ones. But... Uh, um, Another one I like, another baseball one's Brock. Oh, Meyer that's Jake a good Zaria. one. Oh, no, that's a, an, that's a really good one. He's an alcoholic yes. baseball broadcaster. Very, yeah, very 100%. good. Yeah, 100%. That, I totally forgot about Brock Meyer. That is, that is definitely up there. Gives, uh, yeah, that gives, that would give the league a run for its money, I think, too. I've enjoyed, I've enjoyed, as a Lakers fan, I've enjoyed winning time. And uh, John C. riley has been awesome as uh, Dr. Buss. So <laughs> that's good. Wait, wait for do you, do you like it as like a, just a, a fictionalized oh, yeah. version yeah, yeah, of yeah. it, though. I like don't, you're a big, you're yeah. a big Lakers fan, so you know I've how to take through, it with a grain I've of salt. I've sat through though. all the documentaries for all the Lakers stuff. I've watched it all, so I know the <laughs> stories inside out. I really do enjoy the kind of the, the sensationalization of it all, and uh, and I think the characters awesome. are, are awesome. Uh, the guy that plays Jerry West, where he's just freaking out and he's in the back of the limo, like cursing at the Boston Celtics. I love it. That's it, it's awesome. It's awesome. All right, guys, thanks so much for coming on. Good luck with the NBA Finals bets, and uh, we'll catch up with you guys next week. Before we get to the two-minute drill with Arthur, i got a couple bets, a few bets here for NBA Finals Game 1. Going with Michael Porter Jr. over 15.5 points. This one out there, minus 105. The 6'10 Porter 
kind of can do what he wants here against this Miami team in terms of matchups. He can shoot over smaller defenders. He can blow by bigger ones. Miami doesn't really have a great rotation to throw at him. You're either going to go small with Butler or Martin at forward, or you're going to go too slow with Love and Cody Zeller, who didn't even play at the end of that Celtic series because they were defensive liabilities. And then, you know, Bam Adebayo is just not going to leave Jokic side, even with the way that this team switches, I think. And as we've seen Miami, when they've played Denver, Bam has basically been glued to the side of the Joker. Uh, but but Porter can hit some three-pointers. He can get some easy buckets inside if he doesn't get super soft. And I've said he's been one of the softer players in the NBA. But they just don't shrink up, man. But my numbers on him calling for 17.2 points in game one. Some models out there have more than 20 points from Porter Jr. Either way, it gets us past this uh, total of 15.5 for game one. I'm going with his Front court mate Aaron Gordon to go over 15 and a half points plus assists. This one minus 110. Gordon also has some positive projections for Thursday's game. My forecast out there 15.4 points, 3.2 assists, which could have a much higher ceiling. He was stepped up as a, as a big facilitator uh, against the Lakers. Uh, some models out there calling for as many as 22.6 combo stats for this particular prop, uh, which definitely has us going over on his assists plus points. At 15 and a half, like I said, emerged as a facilitator uh, in the LA series. Uh, He has 14 total assists over those four games. He had a great 22-point showing in the final game four, knocking out the Lakers. Uh, And he definitely could just eclipse this combo prop on points alone. So I like Gordon to go over 15 and a half points plus assists. And then with the Heat, I'm going under on Caleb Martin, 16 and a half points at minus 120. Martin's been one of the big surprises for this team and shooting the ball specifically uh, well from outside, which is something that the Heat have done much, much better than they did in the regular season. And he's put up a lot of points, and his points prop for Game 1 as high as 16.5 here. Projections for Game 1, though, all come in well under this. Some of them as much as three points below his uh, point total for Game 1. My number at 12.5 points for Martin in Thursday night. He's been especially sharp from outside the last few games, 8 for 14 in those final two games against Boston. But just standard regression, hitting the road, playing a different defense. And then Denver plays a pretty tight perimeter defense as well, too. They've given up less than 10 three-pointers per game in the postseason. I think that keeps him under this inflated total. Going to see some bigger, taller defenders as well, too. He's going to have a guy like Porter Jr. or Aaron Gordon in his face with their hand up. So I like Martin to go under 16.5 points at minus 120. Two-minute drill time with Arthur DeCesar of the Superbook. Arthur, NBA Finals down to the heat and the Nuggets. Who is the book rooting for in terms of liability in the futures market? We will be pulling for the Denver Nuggets. Ah, who'd have thought, right? We'll be getting here with <laughs> heat heat and Nuggets. Uh, game one tips off Thursday night. Where did you guys open the spread? How has the action been here on this opening game so far? We open Nuggets minus eight. We're now at nine, but nothing really sharp so far. It's basically been public money that is back Denver. Okay. Uh, game one total, just short of 220. Uh, where was the Superbook stance on that number, and where's the early money landed on the total? So we opened a little bit lower. We were as low as 218 and a half. Mm-hmm. We're now 219 and a half. So we've mm-hmm. seen some under money. We did take a sharp play at 218 and a half. Okay. Uh, NBA Finals MVP, obviously it's like Jokic and everyone else. Uh, but any other players drawing MVP futures as we get into this uh, series? I think no surprise because of the juicy number, Jamal Murray, 12 to 1. I think people want to take a shot there. Yeah, and a guy who can just go off for 40. Yep. And, uh, all right. Puck drops, though, in the Stanley Cup final. Saturday, the Golden Knights taking on the Panthers. What are the series odds? What's the best outcome for the book in this one? We'll definitely be rooting for the Panthers. But yeah. Knights, minus 130, we were as high as 135, but the, the series price has stayed pretty consistent. The people taking shots on the stars have kind of been price shopping. Okay, and with you guys being a Nevada-based book, other Nevada-based books, are you going to pad your prices on the Golden Knights because of kind of geographical bias uh, compared to what we'll see in some other illegal states? You know what? We don't have to this year. I think in oh. all the other years, we would have. We're okay on the Knights. Okay. Uh, WNBA too, underway. I love the dub. It's my uh, summer summer love. How is that market? Is it grown at all with the audience expanding? It's definitely grown. It's very popular here with the Aces. 
And it's mm-hmm. also very popular with the professional bettors, especially on totals. They love betting the totals. Yeah, dub totals move, and they'll move like and 10 they'll points. Move. It's, yep. it's crazy, yeah. All right, we got a couple fun questions. I heard the horn, but time for fun in the sun. I, 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 will, I will admit it. I like my kind of tropical fruity cocktails. Is there one tropical fruity cocktail that you are not ashamed to drink in public? I mean, if I'm in like a beach resort town and you give me a frozen pina colada, I'll do it all day. All right. And we were talking about this earlier on the show. Best TV sports shows, a TV show based somewhat around sports. Clear eyes, full hearts, can't lose. Oh, yeah. Friday Night Lights. I, I don't even think it's close, but that's, uh, that's just a good me. one. Yeah. Texas forever, buddy. Yep. Texas forever. All right. That is it for this episode of the Sharp 600. Thank you, Taco. Thank you, Ro. Thank you, Arthur. Thank you, Dell. Thank you for listening. Uh, while we're here, too, sending some positive vibes to the folks in Halifax displaced by the fires there. That's the home of Cover's headquarters. We do have some members on our team that have uh, had, to, had to leave their homes here and evacuate. So I'm glad everyone is safe and we're thinking of you guys and hoping the best and we love you. A uh, reminder to rate and review the Sharp 600 podcast when you do have a moment. We'll be back next Wednesday. Until then, enjoy the NBA Finals and good luck with your bets.